Hi everyone, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, Jai Madadi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Merchant Navy Decoded. Today I'm today I'm very happy because I've got a very senior, very special guest. Uh, sir's name is Uday Ranadev. Uh, he is 1969 pass out from the same college that I passed out in 2008. That is M E R I Kolkata. On one end, my roll number is 5906. Sir's number is 1126. Very very senior to me. Sir started his sailing career in 1969. Till nineteen seventy nine, he was sailing. In six years, in ninety by nineteen seventy five, he was a chief engineer. Those were the times. Today, you can't even imagine that becoming a chief engineer in six years. Till nineteen seventy nine, he was sailing. Then, by nineteen seventy nine, decided to quit sailing and go to shore. That is where we'll ask what he did and what he was teaching and about those two important students which you also need to know about. Then, after that, what took him to? Survey that is Indian Register of Shipping. We'll know a little bit about Indian Register of Shipping. We'll know about a job of surveyor, how tough it is. If anybody amongst you is looking to switch over to becoming a surveyor, that what are the advantages of becoming a surveyor, and what all are the disadvantages of this becoming a surveyor? Because when we are talking to Uday sir, it's been thirty-four years of being a surveyor at at uh, Indian Register of Shipping. Rather retiring as a chief surveyor at Indian Institute of Shipping. So welcome, sir. Welcome out here. Thank you very much for bestowing your love, support, and trust to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pranit, for calling me uh, for this podcast, and I'm so excited uh, to to talk to you. And if you are asking me all sorts of questions, I know I I don't know whether I'll have all the answers, but I'll try to answer. To Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And that is why I don't give any like you asked me. Okay, if you have any questions, you can give me, sir. I never plan these interviews. I just go with the flow. So really, to be very honest, even I do not know where this interview is going to go. But definitely, all the viewers out here, they are going to get something, some good learning out here, and that is what we are aiming at. So, sir, uh, first very basic question is why did you choose sailing those years in nineteen sixty five? That was a, one of the best questions. I would like to answer. Uh, actually, truly speaking, nobody from my family had ever sailed on ships. As I said in my book, I said the closest to the ship which I had gone was when my when my elder cousin who decided to go to when he got his admission for his MS in US at his Berkeley University, he decided to go by ship, and so that is the only time I went to see him off on you know, to Ballard Pier, a big ship, and I was waving him. Uh, thinking that he is among the crowd. Later on, I came to know that he was actually sitting in the bar having a cold beer. Then, but we were from the shore. We were just waving, thinking that he is somewhere there, and that was the closest ship to the ship. Which, but uh, coming back to the uh, reality, uh, I was doing my uh, B.Sc. with the chemistry major, and one of the uh, my batchmate who had already joined D.M.A.T. a year back, he came to see me and he said. Uh, uh, Why are you joining B B S C? Why don't you join marine engineering? I said, "What is marine engineering?" So he explained to me everything about D M A T. I said, "Okay, I I would certainly like to join." But he said, "This year the admissions are gone. You can only apply next year." So I did apply next year, and and you know those days uh, only hundred students were being taken. Maybe same state now. I don't know how many students are taken, but out of All India, they only took hundred students, so I could get into DMT, and uh, DMT was good for me because uh, the the education was subsided, sub subsidized, subsidized, and so we had no fee almost except for the hostel fees and probably for uh, mess we had to pay. Uh, so I joined and uh, I liked it, the uniform and you know the discipline. Uh, Ragging. <laughs> We How what kind of ragging used to happen? To I call it training, sir. I don't call it ragging. But what kind of ragging used to happen during your times? Because at our times, there used to be slaps. But you were you were also getting slaps. I mean, slaps. So there was no 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 no. There was no physical ragging as such. But then you have seen kind of a ragging which you have seen in that movie Three Idiots. You know. So uh, you know you. <laughs> On your underwear and kind of a stuff, so there used to be a something like a very famous candle dance. So the, you had to take the candles in our backside, you know, in our bums, 
and you should dance without dropping them down <laughs> you know the burning <laughs> candles <laughs> okay those were the times but no physical uh, dragging never no no physical. hopping push ups those used yeah. to be the punishment yeah. that used hopping to be the punishment that used to be there uh, you know they used to come and ask up very funny questions sort of a thing take around here there generally but that used to get over within first 3 months it used to get over and then we to give a, we used to give one uh, party to the seniors uh, and after that no ragging so then they will become all okay with us no so problem. for 4 years at mr kolkata it changed my life if i would say what one lesson you learnt which helped you throughout your life which you learnt in those 4 years at college what would that be oh uh, uh first of all uh, uh take the uh your after your ragging and after the discipline and everything you start understanding what this life is all about uh you have to go by the your uh, discipline in the sense that you must start reporting to the people take learn to take orders uh from the rank that is what in our uh, uh on the ships which happens you know that the second engineer gives the order the third engineer then third the fourth and you have to go as per the ranking because everybody can't be a boss you know you have to listen to the boss because that is how the entire discipline and that is how the entire machinery works uh, so basically the discipline has put a lot of uh, uh, they have given us a lot of uh, um, good uh, what should i say how to come up in life and without the discipline you can't come up like this so i learned that uh, the dmt taught us uh, all the basic things for survival all the basic things how to get along with your life how to face the tough life on the ships and without dmt i don't think i would have faced this life because all these things were instilled in us during the entire dmt days that how to face a life on gym that was why the dmt training was so useful to us you know because i've seen that uh, many of the people who joined with me as a, after their b degrees they couldn't take the life they had to leave the ship because they were asked to do certain things on the ship and they said this is not my job and that is not my job and you know so that is what i learned from the dmt that uh, nothing is lowly you know every job is your job which come in whichever jobs come in your way you have to do it and like for example we had to go and trace the pipelines uh and the ballast uh, or no and, and down below 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 the floor plates we went there what was we never felt our oh this is not my job that is not my this is dirty or hey, we never felt that way uh, we went we worked with our own hands but uh, many of the um be mechanical and electrical guys who came directly from the ship after about probably 6 months of apprenticeship in masgon docks or something like that. they were not happy he, he said oh no no that is my not job my job i will not do with my hand i will not dirty my hand so the dmt was uh, i must say my alma mater was that way great and it happened and in in, in it pushed me in life also and uh, it uh, during the surveyor's life or whatever life uh, whatever job which we did you know we were quite at ease with our boiler suit on and that's the way that's all like i i could think of as as of now great sir great so 10 years at sea from 1969 to 1979 i would say 6 uh, years becoming a chief and then 4 years as chief engineer you have seen uh, big ships bad ships tough ships easy ships if there is one memory that still stays with you like this is something that i cannot forget you still share those stories with your wife at time you have shared with your wife your children your grandson even what would that story be if you could share it with us if there is some story any one story there are, story. There are many stories like that the first comes to my mind is uh, uh uh which can be related to thinking out of box you know it's a uh, a uh, big saying normally people say you must think out of box so once it happened that uh, i was a third engineer on one of those old uh, jnt ships which had uh, two scotch boilers and one scotch boiler was uh, under maintenance and second was uh, had a very low low pressure you know 
and we had told the fifth engineer on watch uh, that to ensure that uh, uh, don't let this pressure go down because there is no other steam or anything in no other source of energy for us okay and we went to a show because i think we were in chennai that time me and second engineer went and uh, when we came back she, the fifth engineer was holding his head and he, he was just crying i said what happened he says yes you told me not to let the pressure steam pressure go down but it has gone down for some reason or the other and, and now there is no steam pressure so you cannot start the feed pump to put the water in the, you cannot fire the boiler uh, and and it was very difficult situation because fuel pump won't start uh, without the steam is everything is on steam and so we were wondering what to do now i mean we are without power complete power gone and so then what we did we went, went to the cargo hold we got hold of a lot of woods and cardboard boxes and everything and we put them into the into yeah. the furnace and light it put some diesel oil on it and light it the whole thing and the furnace burned some pressure came up so we started the feed pump so we could put some water in the water in the boiler and so that's how we built up the pressure and the fuel pump started but that was that was something which i can I cannot forget you know but mm -hmm. another thing i can't forget is one of the stories when on my uh when we were reaching uh, about 8 10 days away from a uh, us coast and we were reaching uh, i think uh, new orleans or some place on new york probably and um, our spnl overspeed governor on bmw engine broke down because of continuous it was a bad weather the propeller was coming out of water and again emerging in water so every time the uh, rpm is to get raised like anything and come down and somehow i don't know how because second year reported to me that our governor has broken down i had never seen a main engine governor breaking down i don't think anybody has seen that main engine governor breaking down and your entire ship's uh, uh, rpm engine rpm needs to be controlled manually by you know either reducing the fuel labor back or increasing the fuel that and that's how all my engineers like fourth third and second engineers they had to do eight hours a four hours watch four hours four hours like that doing the controlling the speed of the engine uh, up and down through the fuel lever that was another uh, incident which <laughs> i cannot forget and uh, i'm glad that we of course uh, i'm glad that we crossed and came to usa uh, within seven days and then of course we had to change the governor there but sir, that was some speeches us a lot life Where teaches us a lot sir teaches us a lot how to utilize resources everything it teaches us a lot sir now 1979 you told me that story that you were sitting in a hotel and you found your own teacher who taught you at uh, could you please tell that story so that how you joined dmt mumbai <laughs> yeah i mean when my ship was in mumbai port and went out for a lunch at sheri punjab i found my Uh, guru or my uh, deputy director who was there who later on became a director in calcutta his name was mr k kishore and i salute him because he was one of the very very uh, uh, respected uh, teacher you know and so he met me then he asked me what are you doing now i said my ship has come here and you know so he said what would you do how do you, are you going to look for a sure job he said yeah sometime or other i will definitely look for a sure job so he said why don't you join dmat as a teacher you know uh, we are short of teachers here and uh, since you are uh, uh, fresh from the sea uh, i think your engineering knowledge would be uh, a good subject for you to teach so i that uh, uh, somehow appealed to me and then after about year and a half or two whatever it is i i joined dmat as a lecturer on a ad hoc basis Uh, and to see what is what and i actually love teaching i love training and i love love teaching and my 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 students were very happy with me because i not only told them about the uh, taught them about the soldier or whatever engines etc but i taught them about i shared my experience see experiences with them so they used to be very happy to be in my class you know 
and uh, with that uh, slowly i started i was told to teach also the strength of materials theory of machines which i had studied in my dmt days so that was a little difficult but i had to really study for four or five hours before one hour lecture and uh, i did that i did that nothing is impossible you can always come back and you know so i i taught many subject i only refused to teach one subject i said that is the engineering drawing i am not going oh, to teach course. that Sir, i wanted you to say that because that is a subject that i was always getting d's and i used to pray but this time i have to pass somehow i have to pass so you said i felt so happy yeah. i said that subject i was never good at and i am not going to teach that subject all other subjects are fine so anyway so uh, because some people are very good at technical drawing but i was not good and so uh, so also my son you also said in his engineering as that drawing i don't like it i said yeah, even i didn't like the drawing during my days but uh, so that was a good uh, uh, experience in dmet and um, i was also uh, made officer in charge hostels you know how was that experience sir because yeah. at time kolkata used to be a terror being a oic hostel coming yeah. for oic hostel and uh, i used to go for inspection of hostels and all no? so these uh, young uh, cadets uh, they decided to uh, show me something of their flavor one day and so i went for that when i see what i see all st- students uh, all cadets lined up with their uniforms and right in the center in the corridor there is a big huge heap of uh, all the uh, shoes chappals old shoes and chappals you know it was my first uh, inspection as oic and <laughs> they greeted me with all these things you know so <laughs> i said okay you are trying to teach your grandfather what to do is it okay let me take the challenge and i called them i said whose shoes are these who chappals are these etc and then they all nobody would own you know i said okay and i'm i'm sure some of them their own shoes must have been there because i could see some of the good shoes also so they you can't get so many shoes and chappals from somewhere else you know so they they must have gathered i said now do one thing in uh, when our hostel was there in mumbai that was the shivri uh and there was the next to it was uh, uh the sea shore you know not shore but it was a sea coming the back whatever you call it a back bay or something like that so <laughs> i told them collect all these thing put it them into one thela uh, each all of them one by one and go and put them drop them into sea because they don't belong to you so why did you keep them you throw them there and they didn't know what to do now now there's the old shoes they had to then they lost the shoes because all the shoes went into the sea you know from there and after that they never played any tricks then i told him i said what are you doing here i am your friend i am like you i am also young i am not very old i said just about 30 one or something like that and um, i am going through the same thing here i should try it on me i said you to your try to you know what you call it you are trying to teach your grandfather what to do like that so then they realized you know after that they dropped <laughs> can you please share the uh, about your two you have got fabulous many students but let's know about those two students those who have done really well and there are many more but yeah i mean i mean and there, there are many students who have done very well and i am so happy but uh, what i who i came in contact with more is uh, one is a uh, Uh, this fellow jairaj uh, jairaj and along with him was uh, dhawan and one more person i forgot his tika name tika sir huh tika Sorry? sir tika tika no uh, tika was another one but there are jairaj bad there was jairaj dhawan and somebody they started a, jairaj started a big uh, company that's called ocean sparkle he, i believe now he has sold it company to adani adani recently, recently. they but, did a uh, fabulous job for years a fabulous job for years yeah, yeah he was fantastic i mean uh, he, he was a very good business when i must say and he, he did very well so jairaj was uh, i was in touch with him for uh, quite some time i think few years back when i met him also in hyderabad when i had gone to see my cousin so he had come there so he has done well and then sanadar was balaji tika who started his uh, 
company called executive ship management so i also respect him a lot because he has gone through a lot he was with some other company in hong kong and then he 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 left that company and somehow and he explained many time once he met me in in tokyo bus you know when we were coming out from the airport and got into one of the terminals second terminal and then during by the during the journey when we went to our hotel in uh, tokyo he told me and he shared his experience how he started this company it was very very interesting to learn and how he did everything and how he came up and brought up this company so well i really respect these two guys you know both of them and among them many others who have done very well i don't even know some of them they might have gone and done well somewhere else. but i remember these two guys who have done well so these are good to interview interview these two some day sir i hope to do that so that these young youngsters out there this hundreds thousands of youngsters out there who want to join merchant navy they should get a vision of inspiring journeys out there see sir in corporate sector they people know microsoft satya nadella they know sundar pichai they also yeah. need to know the story of uh, balaji tika they also need to know the story of uh, jairaj sir they also need to know the story of ravi mehrotra sir so that these inspiring stories can inspire them to start their companies of their own and make it big <laughs> so that is what yeah. i am saying sir very good no, that that's that's a good thing that's a good thing because uh, uh, earlier you know when during our days probably the marine yang was not many people used to go that take that path you know even but today now, sir we are struggling with that even today we are struggling but now i see so many ladies going for this hats off to them uh, really i mean uh, they are really hats off to them we have is uh, in irs we have this uh, two ladies we had one was kunali uh, banerjee ma'am Sonali Banerjee is still there, and the other lady I forgot her name. She was there with me uh, when I was there. And, uh, I, I'm really proud of such ladies that they have undergone all the training, they have undergone all the uh, life on the sea, adventurous life, and keeping the uh, watch in the engine room, doing the maintenance, everything, and then they became. Uh, so uh, bear i really i actually was in mumbai recently and i wanted to interview her as well to know her journey and to put it in the video as well but couldn't yeah. get but maybe next time that will happen so sir now let's come to the most important point now this is where the video actually starts rest all was introduction so for 30 years 34 years i would so you are working at indian register of shipping those people who do not know that that is a classification society if i am right sir yes sir. so, ship so now so sir there are many youngsters out here those who would love to ship to shore because people need transition we join for money but when that money comes then suddenly we feel oh, we need recognition we need something we need family time and then these things come up and suddenly we feel that sailing is not made for which is not bad and then they look for transition that is what maybe we you look for maybe i look for so being becoming a surveyor can be a great option so out here i want to know what is a profile of a survey you have been there for 34 years starting a survey then becoming a chief surveyor so i want to know my first question is sir let us talk about what is the life of a surveyor let's know about that uh yes the life of a surveyor it depends upon how you take it let me tell you that when i joined uh, irs uh i was very happy and uh, i thought i having sailed on the ships for so many years being a chief engineer i knew hell of a lot about maintenance and everything and uh, i knew all about all um, engines and you know all the, everything but when i joined irs i came to know that i know nothing because <laughs> there, because there is such a huge knowledge in every classification society i understood i know nothing about welding i know nothing about real materials i know nothing about you know oh, how to inspect uh, uh, you know the turbine in the sense that uh, turbine means our gas turbine what we had turbo charge is what call it and what to see and uh, wondering and i said uh, so uh, and people were talking about astm uh, 106 grade b and it says i mean, what is all this new language to me i got uh, quite a 
uh, inferiority complex. I said, I think I am in a wrong place. Looks like you know, but then my seniors told me that it happens to everybody. You don't worry. You take it easy. You will come to know everything. And so we had to put in a lot of lot of efforts because there are a lot of. Uh, uh, rules are there which you have to go through it they give you all materials everything different type of uh, rules are there even on materials on surveying and everything and then there are survey procedures those days the survey procedures were not there we had to develop in irs but uh, at least uh, there were seniors were there mentors were there and they took good care of us and we came up and that is where the entire knowledge bank is there in, in IRS. I mean, in every classification society, there's such a lot of knowledge. And that knowledge, the knowledge is, you know, key to any success. So you must have knowledge. So entire knowledge, including the statutory requirements, because, for example, this ballast water management, where was it that time when I was... I was actually representing... Uh, I was going with the Government of India delegation to IMO for the ballast water management when it was getting developed, the whole thing. And uh, we went there, there are entire, and it was a, quite an honor to sit there with all the countries represented to sitting in IMO, like, you know, it's part of the, you know, and then uh, asking questions and the discussions going on. And uh, I've seen the US country and their, their fleet, the, uh, at least 15, 20, 30 people would come there, you know, you know, and he's expert in this, he's expert in that. And uh, it was a great experience to actually formulate the ballast water management. It came only in 2019. It, this must have happened sometime in 2000 something, 2004, 5, something, 6, something like that. And it came in 19. So I was part of that ballast water management uh, uh, convention. Uh, and uh, the resolution, whatever it came into there. But that is what I'm saying, that the, there is a, such a knowledge in in, um, in classification societies. So if somebody is interested in getting knowledge, what I have seen, that lots of people, they do join a IRS, they get a lot of knowledge, at least part of a knowledge, not lot, full, but a lot of knowledge. And then they take this as a step to go to another shipping company or some such thing which has been happening there. But if you stay in IRS, what I've seen, and I stayed in IRS, I think it's a very good knowledge. That's a, that's what I thought that uh, IRS has given me so much of knowledge and I had, that was a decision which I made, which I'm always happy about. Never sir, regret it. Never regret sir, it. I you think so. Yes, yeah, sir. They, yeah, go ahead. No, sir, please go ahead. You were saying something. I stopped. Yeah, 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 I think. But of course, people, you know, they want everything. You want higher pay also. You want knowledge also. You want good life also. You want comfortable life also. That is not going to happen anytime in your life, you know. You will get either this or that. You have to make a trade-off between the whole thing. But IRS pay was those days was definitely not good at all, you know, compared to other over a period of time, I think the IRS pay has now come up quite a bit because, you know, those days people were comparing the salary on, on ships and salary of surveyor. They still Obviously, do that, sir. They still do you that. Cannot compare that. Yeah, you cannot compare that, you know. So, but then when the, they started comparing with the superintendent engineer's salary, with then the shipping company. Business. Then uh, there was a lot of difference between surveyor salary and superintendent engineer salary. But then uh, what job the superintendent engineer had to do and what job as a surveyor, there were two dif different uh, jobs probably, you know. Superintendent engineer has to ensure that his ships are maintained well and they sail on time. And commercial 24 angle. 7 jobs, sir. Even at night, I can see my friends getting a call at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. Yeah. And they're afraid when the phone rings, Ab kya ho gaya on ship, yaar? we do not know what has gone wrong. So definitely when you are compromising on your sleep, sacrificing your family life, your work-life balance is not there, definitely you're going to get paid more. So let's talk about that work-life balance right now. So how is that work-life balance maintained at IRS? Like what is your normal duty in a normal day or if you're going to a ship for inspection, like how does it go there? Ah, it's like this, you know, in the... Uh, when I was in IRS as a junior surveyor or surveyor and when we used to do the ships, uh, so uh, we used to reach uh, the Cuff Parade office uh, by 8.30 or so. And uh, previously, we have already been allotted the ships. 
uh, that which ships and what type of survey is there on that particular ship. So normally, each surveyor will do at least uh, two ships in the morning, and uh, sometimes uh, another one or two ships in the afternoon after lunch. So, uh, so for that we used to reach uh, office. Now, of course, everything is online. But those days there were no computers that like that. So we had to go to the office, uh, pick up the complete, uh, you know, uh, ships uh, rep reports or not report. I would say the survey status of the uh, particular thing, which uh, surveys are due, which items are due from machinery, etc., 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 and then uh, take go to the ship change into boiler suit and uh, start doing the survey. But before that, we had to read in the night, uh, previous evening, ki, what are the requirements for the surveys on annual survey requirement. We should not miss out on that, what I'm seeing. Here. Though we had a checklist, but we should see. So some preparation was required in the previous night. Go there, go on the ships, you know, change into boiler suit and uh, start doing the survey and uh, ensure that you don't miss out anything and then give all the recommendations you note down on your diary and give the recommendations go into the cargo hold go into the cargo tanks uh, take uh, ensure that they are uh, full of oxygen at least there is sufficient oxygen is there otherwise you have a problem especially in tankers when we used to go into the cargo hold that used to be a big problem to take so ensure that oxygen content is good the explosive meters everything so all those things safety of uh, you know so those is item ISM was not there when we used to do surveys. ISM came much later so on that was ISM. long time back today when i see it, say you retired in 2018 79 or 18 in the beginning, I would say, like five years back, I would say now it is impossible practically to do four surveys in a day. Like the checklist is huge. Going yeah. down six tanks is not easy in coming up. Like <laughs> it requires a lot of fitness. So what yeah. is, what would, what I want to ask is like if today a young mariner wants to join, so what kind of a life can he expect there? Like not comparing with your olden days, but today. Like say five years back when you left, what it, it, will be definite, it will be definitely better than the supreme engineer's life. That much I can tell you. Because so, as you say, supreme engineer is all the time, you know, on tenter hooks, what is happening on the ship and then he has to ensure because he has to uh, take care of the commercial angle also and then the ship's maintenance also and everything, you know. So that's a little big balancing act he has to do and he, he can't say, I can't go today, I'm now sleeping like that, you know. That, that kind of at least you get normally good sleep for a subway unless unless of course you have to uh, go at odd time because the ship is sailing or some such thing yes, yes. at times you have to do that you can do that but uh, by and large you will not uh, have this kind of a 24 by 7 uh, call for a subway you know that will not be there uh, he, he does uh, have his family life except as I said that those days it was we were not never sure that we'll get our Saturdays or Sundays because invariably the ship would call on Saturdays and Sundays and they would be in Anchorage. So you drive all the way to Balat Pier, uh, go on a ship. It could be just one matter, one issue, one uh, uh, survey item of setting of safety wall, you know, of the auxiliary boiler. But then it uh, takes whole day eh, going up down this thing, you know. So. Uh, Saturday is gone. Sometimes Sunday is gone. We never used to get any compensatory off for that. Okay, no compensatory off also. No. No. Okay, That's that is not. bad. That is bad. So, but, is traveling but, allowed? Like you have to travel uh, outside India also like Japan. Some ship is in Japan yeah. or Singapore. So, you have to travel abroad also like superintendents do. Yes, we, we had to, sometimes we had some ships abroad. Uh, and then we had to we send our surveys abroad for conducting a survey when we didn't have the offices over there. Today, no, IRS, IRS has plenty of offices in Europe and, you know, in, in, in Arab countries like Abu Dhabi and Dubai and kind of stuff, USA, okay. London, everywhere our IRS offices are there. So now we don't have to send really surveys from Mumbai. Those days we used to send surveys from Mumbai because we didn't have offices. But IRS is a big uh, classic society now. So opening offices and IRS is the youngest society actually. Okay, you know, it's the youngest society. Youngest, oh yeah. IRS is what? We started IRS in uh, uh, 1975. 
and uh, you see how many years have gone down. all all the societies are 200 300 400, uh, years old you know like lloyds and bb and abs they're all so old class societies you know we are catching up it will take so some we, time so success of a classification society depends upon how many ships are registered with the classification society so as of now approximately how many ships might be registered with uh, classification society your irs just an approximation I think around th- thousand eight hundred to thousand eight hundred ships like worldwide. Yes, worldwide. I think so. I think so. approximation. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I think maybe about twenty million tons. Uh, tons. An age is twenty million. GRT, of course. Right. Sir, next now let's. So I have got an idea about the work-life balance. Yes, it is not as difficult as superintendents. So let's talk about liabilities. responsibilities when i talk about a ship engineer chief engineer on board ship has got responsibility ship machinery should be in all good condition superintendent has got a much bigger responsibility that the commercial angle technical angle management angle maintain everything needs to be taken care of what about a surveyor i think i do not know if i'm saying in a crude language you are there to find flaws but is there any liability involved as well or any responsibility involved as well with a surveyor who goes on board ship yeah first thing is you said you are finding the flaws it's actually uh, not the flaws we are actually ensuring that the ship is actually complying with all the rules and regulation that is tell copy sir i said it this way because 100000 seafarers out there they use this word so i had to use this word correct so now second thing comes as a surveyor's competency which is very very important factor if the surveyor is not competent obviously what will happen is he will miss out on various uh, requirements if he doesn't see something which he is supposed to see working for example there is a ship uh, a roro ship let us say and the roro ship has got a ram which comes down and closes no right for the either for the cars to come in and go out now mm-hmm. there are certain uh, um the water tightness of this inter- water tight integrity of this particular door is very very important and uh, also that, that's why you have many alarms also on that now if these alarms are not checked not seen uh, and they are not working properly and tomorrow the ship the, the hold gets flooded you will have a big problem if there is no water tight integrity properly checked you know like that kind of so even for that matter you conduct carry out certain repairs on boiler let us say and uh, you do not do a proper uh, hydro test on the boiler uh, what will happen you know you know you can understand so there is a lot of liability on a surveyor job you know when a surveyor comes he has to see everything he he, he should be first of all competent he should know what to see and how to see and how to test and what to test and that kind of a stuff so he has been trained for that for that he has been Have trained very been sacked from the company just because they were not good surveyors maybe they went they inspected they said all is okay and maybe after 3 days a ship sank or a big incident happened has something like this happened or the people who come at irs or even other classification societies are very well trained just want to know in a general way uh, there was a there have been certain incidences like all world over uh like this in irs we haven't had uh, luckily such incident but what happens is um he, there are what you must have known i mean you, you must be seeing the uh, that uh, report state control they actually uh, visit the vessels uh, to see after, and if the vessel has just been cleared after say annual survey and load line survey and kind of stuff that, that which is a statutory survey and if the port state control visits the ship within 3 months of the completion of survey and they find the detain the vessel and they uh, ensure that these this vessel will not sail until all these repairs are completed so that goes against uh, a classification society that your surveyor has just completed this survey he has certified this vessel he has given a certificate to this vessel uh, and now the port state control has been that's an embarrassment to, i would say and that's an embarrassment and that goes as a black dot on your class society and then as depending upon such vessels how many vessels are getting detained every year or maybe the same vessel is getting detained twice 
that's a very bad thing for any subway so that black dot comes on the classification side then that black dot carries forward to that superintendent that surveyor who had gone on that ship and inspected that ship as well that yeah, i mean yeah the big corrective actions are necessary as so how did he miss this what happened to his competency why did it happen i mean instead of blaming this subway i'm saying you must find out how did it happen and to prevent it from happening again what needs to be done so it should not happen again so that is how but if something happens like this and it is not found because i tell you the difference between a product and a service i would like to mention it here the product let's say take a tv or a fridge or anything this product something goes wrong you can take it back and replace it no problem what about service surveyor has given a service he has missed out on something it cannot be taken back now now it is gone the ship is gone from here you cannot take back the service you can give additional service but you cannot take back that service which has been provided so that's why you have to be absolutely right all the time before you actually certify a ship that, that you have seen everything you have checked everything everything is on it uh, after that something really goes wrong with the you know because of uh, what you say um god Uh, even uh, god's mercy whatever it is that you can't do but wear and tear repairs at least they should not come in between sir i happens. take this as a learning lesson from this video you told me something very good about a product company as well as service industry thank you very much so sir now let's come to one of the most important part that is money I'm not knowing i don't want to know the exact figures that people can find out later but what i want to know i know very well that if you are a irs survey say in mumbai definitely you will have to live in mumbai mumbai living is not easy even staying at rent is not easy so the money is huge that is required the salaries out there even for a, a maritime trainer in a college or in irs is not that much so fine but people if you have interest you can rise up above the ranks you can find experience you can go ahead now my question is how to become satisfied with what you are getting at that time because suddenly when you come to this rank you start comparing or a as a chief engineer was getting 6 lakhs 7 lakhs suddenly i'm getting 1 and a half or 2 lakhs or 2 2.25 lakhs something like that whatever it is so how to manage how did you manage that is what i want to know and what kept you uh, going for 34 long years that is the question yeah i actually when i joined irs uh, our pay was not really good i mean that was what we were told but then uh, we were working for higher purpose let me tell you that in the sense that we were sort of a instilled in us that uh, somehow irs has to become the full member of ix we have to come up and you you um, this i think i would like to share this with you that quite a time a number of times we were humiliated for example uh, there were all dual class ships for example a particular ship was class with lloyds and class with uh, irs you know but irs being a a uh, small brother and lloyds being the full class society so uh, obviously the the ship owners would always call you know this lloyds or bureau veritas or abs so ways and they take their time and we had to match their time fine that was okay because we were learning learning it's okay but when we go there and suppose the lloyds are has come and already seen it was a machinery your cargo hold or whatever it is they already surveyed and if you go on time then the what the ship owners will say oh lloyd survey has already seen why you want to sit you know that kind of a humiliation was there for us when we had to make a lot of mark into into particular that so uh, that was the thing in spite of the bad pay we took it because we were working for a higher purpose and we took it and i am glad to say that we have still come up not we didn't give up everything uh, i am telling you the lloyd surveyor or any other surveyor would come in a car and we would walk i will go by the taxi get down at the gate at the red gate or whatever it is and walk to the ship and and, and in monsoon on a umbrella and a bag packed with the boiler suit and, and everything will walk into the water why because those days irs could not afford to give us car today everything is okay now they get car they get uh, housing i mean they get good flats irs has bought so many flats in pawai on all the survey station they have their flats so the survey doesn't have to really purchase as long as he is working for irs he gets his flat a uh, good flat you know 
two bedroom flat and uh, he can uh, manage uh, with i mean if he wants to buy his own flat nobody can stop him they can but as of now today the irs has its own building big office and uh, they have done very well together they got so many ships this ukraine war has actually helped uh, irs a lot you know all the russian class ships which were declassed by all the other ix class societies uh, the they could irs could class many of their ships and so the business has also gone up and uh, so now irs is doing well i think their pays are very good uh, compared to what we got and uh, i think irs survey should be very happy uh, they got excellent building huge auditorium very nice training uh, online everything so i think uh, irs is doing very i hope well. sir i'll share this video with uh, two of the surveyors at irs that i know and i hope if i get a chance to visit mumbai and if i can they can call me i would love to make a video of that place and maybe interview some surveyors so that maybe uh, uh, this can get a so that surveyors can get a more visibility in the shipping industry that this is another life that people can look at when i am talking to you sir i am feeling really having some goosebumps out here uh, looking about the bigger purpose ki today you have got indians in the map of shipping industry because of the hard work that you put in out there years back so that when there is lloyds when there is bureau veritas and today we have got irs as well out there so sir a big thanks to you and your whole team your whole team out there who worked that's what i tell these youngsters out there today through the social media ki today what we are getting is only because of the seniors those who years back put in sweat their sweat out there their blood and sweat out there so that we are reaping benefits that companies are coming saying they need indian officers they need indian crew so value that make it make it more much better than what it was before so that more people can get jobs out here because we indians can do much better and that is what i am looking at this story so thank you oh that i'll tell you two things i would like to mention it here one is of course uh, i must not forget my wife because she was working she is a doctor and she was working with uh, one of the hospitals there municipal hospitals uh, and uh, she was earning so actually you know both of us earned uh, okay together so that we were we were able to educate our children well that that's no problem that is the first thing second thing i also uh, i mean i must mention it and record it here that our uh, bosses who joined from lloyds uh, the mr kare mr taneja mr uh, hs rao mr chandra and mr ak chopra these five gentlemen they came from uh, lloyds and they had a great jobs at lloyds but they gave up their big nice jobs to start irs and they 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 had all the benefits uh, they could have retired with very nice pension but somehow something was burning that we must start our own national ship classification society i we must say that and uh, you must have heard about captain anand who is still going strong 102 year old is huh? is and um, he is the one who actually uh, took up this idea of starting a national ship classification society of indian register of shipping he fought for it and with all the his uh, you know efforts uh, he was able to get all these five people and they actually brought up irs uh, that those days their pay was also less compared to what they were getting at so they also sacrificed their careers for starting a virus and so when they instilled all this thing in us we were also moved and say nothing doing we will ensure that irs survives uh, then sustains and grows and that is what we did then the irs sustained and today i can see only irs growing but those days all those people uh, for today's people who are working for irs i always would request them to remember what their senior who started did and how they actually uh, brought up the irs today which fruits which you are actually having you know never forget their those people right? sir please if possible do share some even one members contact number i'll try to convince 
even if i have to go to mumbai i'll reach i'll make a video with them i'll share their story so that not just the irs people the youngsters coming these people need to know the stories not the irs just not just the irs but the whole maritime industry need to know ki how a vision can transform lives of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people out there so i'll 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 send it to you i'll send it to you we we'll have a we'll have a chat on this and definitely sir with this sir last question last question and we'll end this session and i'm really sir i never imagined that this is going to turn out to be such a good learning lesson for me as well that is i want to know about those two books that you have written i want to know why you wrote those books and what is it all about if you could show them i would love to know that i would love to see them as well the first book can you see the life yes, well life well cruise by uday ranadev yes this is the book which uh, actually i have compiled all my experiences and why i wrote this book is because two three things one is uh, whenever i used to meet my relatives friends and others non seafarers basically they used to ask me about the life at sea what is the life at sea and i used to talk to them and I, they used to ask me more questions i used to share my, all my experiences with my wife and uh, she actually suggested to me that why don't you pin down all your memories so i said okay uh, instead of writing separately she said why don't you write in a book format and then covid came you know and then covid we had nothing to do so then i decided let us write at least make use of this time i said you can't go out anywhere so then that is how i wrote the book basically for the non seafarers so that they understand the life of uh, of the seafarer and what is the importance of a seafarer because what is the ships are going bringing cargo but how much cargo almost 85 90% of the cargo has been moved by the ships today okay. and under what conditions and now what conditions the seafarers work all that thing i wanted to bring out to to the non seafarers to the people who are do, do not know anything about the uh, marine engineer marine engineers as well as sailing on the ships like that so that was the main purpose of writing this book at the same time i wanted to <coughs> give the upcoming marine engineer some kind of a uh, experience what is on the so that they can join the mainstream of marine engineering and they can work on the ships so that was the the main idea of uh, writing this uh, um this book called life well cruised and book, uh, sir the link to buy this book will be in the description box as well in the comment section i am definitely going to get one this is available on amazon no problem you can just go give the name on the amazon and it will come so that is this book and you wanted to know about my second book second book yes sir this is a uh, this is called the corporate boogie man now this is something unusual a mariner writing about corporate boogie man what is this sir? you have to tell me about this as well uh, okay uh, so what is written at the back i will just read it out sure, sure you let sure. for an engineer getting a job at uh, pci pci is a project uh, corporation of india it's just a fictitious name you know a company uh, was like getting admission into iit but now these same engineers were fleeing this one mighty company competitors were swallowing its market share and profits were falling an all time low meanwhile a small band of patriots within the organization come together to try and save their beloved company but for this they will have to take on the boogie man their suave sharp tongued and narcissist cmd who had the board in his pocket and the mandarins in delhi on his payroll could they face down this formidable opponent and turn the company around or would they have to go down with the sinking ship that is the plot that means actually uh i have seen uh, for your information i not only did the uh, marine survey job but i did lots and lots of auditing of quality quality management systems different type of quality management systems that included also the qs 9000 or ts 16949 standard which is an automobile uh, vendor standard for the automobile uh, big 3 you know <clears throat> and so also may, many other uh, so during all these uh, big companies which i visited i don't want to name them but really big companies in india big industries and and during my entire experience i found that man management is the most difficult part of anybody's life man management 
it is not how the people are totally different people and uh, when you see the resignations coming they are coming from for from it's not for the money part basically somebody you know he is not happy why is not happy if you start analyzing there are so many causes will come out it happened with irs also and it happened with so many other organizations also and it keeps on happening on on various organization as to people leave for what reasons and when we analyze this and we found that almost about 40% of the people leave because of the narcissist bosses or the narcissist atmosphere and you know environment in the company that is one of the main reasons of the people leaving they, they read that's why they say that the people don't leave companies they leave their bosses so 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 why why this happens you know and then we have now big big b schools over here big big schools in which the leadership subjects have been taught initially it was management then it became leadership and still we find that those people not just coming out of various b schools but also those people who go into the leadership uh, positions what do they do do they really know how to run an organization or they just do it as they find it fit to run the organization it's not an easy to run an organization i mean whether you have vision and mission and all big things we can talk about you know but ultimately what matters is how you make the team how your team works well loyal team whether it works properly or not of course a leader has to give a vision he has to set the people get get them enrolled into his vision mission all that thing but then ultimately you see people sometimes who assume they are not the real leaders they are actually uh, rank holders i would say they consider themselves as i am the chairman i am the managing director and you know they're not the leaders so i thought on this background i de- devised a plot and uh, i Uh, put this everything in in this book as to there is a big company called the project corporation of india who was a uh, is a big huge company and uh, what happens in that company because of uh, initially what is a good leadership i have shown and what is a bad leadership what i have shown and finally what happens and you can uh, read this book this is a book for interesting for those people who are doing a lot of corporate uh, corporate people and what can and also for the young leadership who would be now taking the uh, leadership positions in a few years for them this book i i think this is book but not just in corporate i guess even on ship it is very important we have sailed with chief engineers captains who are really good we admire them for what they have taught us and we also remember those people those who did not taught us but they were always bad with us rude and they, narcissistic whatever you say this is my way or highway and not the right leaders i would say so we have seen that on ship as well so everywhere these kind of people exist good and bad if we can become good that is the best part so my last i'm so sorry this interview has gone really long i never intended it to be so long so what keeps you busy these days ha huh. Uh, so after I, I have recently completed writing this book so after that uh, you know my uh, uh, i have come here to usa to take care of uh, our uh, uh, young uh, grandson he is been about 10 months old so i was we were there for 2 3 months with my younger son and now we have come here to my elder son to so be just normally i uh, i i i am on vacation right now but when i go back to india um i will do something i don't know whether i'll write another book or whether i will uh, do something else i am still debating in my mind i have not yet uh, uh, decided what to do because my wife whenever you feel free you have some story to share do just let me know maybe we'll make a small video on that and share with this Hundreds and thousands of seafarers, so that they can get inspired. Maybe from because there is so much from you to learn. I'm always ready up for up for that. And so thank nice. you for thank you for very this nice. lovely interview, sir. Thank you, thank you. Really means a lot, sir. Very much.
and i'm 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 very happy that i didn't know what was this podcast about but anyway we, you made it very interesting so thank you for asking me all right type of questions and i hope i was able to answer Definitely. the questions my so people will hopefully they'll get something out of it Definitely, sir. Definitely. When I got so much, I can understand many others will get, and I hope they ask for many such more interviews. With this, sir, thank you very much. Appreciate it, sir. आपका आशीर्वाद जय माता दी. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have Bye. a good day. Bye.